YouTube, it's me, Bergie, and I'm here with an exciting video. Now, today when I'm filming, it is February 5th, meaning it is the day after The King of Crows by Lobo Bray is published, meaning, as you can see from the title, meaning I will be giving a series review for the entire Diviners series by Lobo Bray, and I'm so excited. So, as you can see, there are four books in this series. There is The Diviners, Layer of Dreams, Before the Devil Breaks You, and finally, The King of Crows. Now all four of these books are YA historical paranormal fantasy novels. And I'll kind of go a little bit into the synopsis for each of them in a little bit, but I'm going to go over the over the overarching um, kind of summary and storyline and setting and that kind of stuff. So this series is set primarily in New York City from 1926 to 1927 and in it we see an amazing atmosphere created around the 1920s post Great War Golden Age culture where booze is illegal but still very much there women are starting to become more free with the emergence of like the flapper culture and also different like subcultures or rather like different nationalities are struggling to gain their footing as equals though immigrants are still facing a ton of prejudice and what is really nice is that it is really taking from actual 1920s history which is just amazing it's done so well and honestly this visceral atmosphere is one of the many strengths of this series and just it's it's great as for the story itself it is a multiple perspective story mostly we do follow a number of the main characters which there are a lot I, a lot of people say that evie is the main character but i wouldn't go so far to say that she is one of the more important of the main group of characters but i i don't know i don't think she is above any of the others but i it's it's up to your <laughs> your perspective and alongside those we get some wider scopes also provided that is more general and doesn't necessarily have to do with the characters but just provides more insight on what's going around in new york city or in the u.s in general and it's just it adds another level to the main perspectives now each perspective we follow is very unique and has its own voice or feel which is crucial when a lot of the characters are being followed so it, it's it doesn't just run together and you it's hard it's not hard to figure out who is speaking or who is being followed during the different perspectives which is again a crucial aspect and i think that logo bray does it extremely well now as a segue let's go into the characters so there is a huge cast of characters that are really integral to the story i'm only going to be talking about a few of them but just know that there are more characters that are important for the overarching plot and as for the characters it is a very diverse cast in so many ways that's definitely another strength or a strong point of the series is the device the diversity of perspectives because Lobo Bray could easily have just made this entirely white because of how the stories from this time are mostly white focused um so she could have easily fallen into that and I think well she does make a point about how stories are only written or last from the winners or like the powerful and that kind of stuff so it is kind of a juxtaposition to that to have so many diverse characters and as for them most of them are diviners as the series and the first book are titled so you would expect that they would be which a diviner is a person who has a supernatural ability um so i'll go into some of the characters first up as i had already mentioned is evie o'neill who is a modern flapper gal with a spitfire attitude who wants the world's attention so she doesn't feel lonely or unloved then we have sam sergey lubovich lloyd who is a thief with a very sassy per personality who really just wants to find his mom and just as a note he is a jewish russian so he is kind of one of the diverse characters although he is still white and straight then we have mabel rose who is evie's best friend 
and she is basically trying to change the world while also moving away from her from being in her parents and her friend Evie's shadow and also for her she is half Jewish although being white again she's not and and straight so she's not as diverse as some of the other characters but there is some other non normal characteristic about her. And then we have Jericho Jones who is a very stoic guy that is very serious but wants to start living life to its fullest since he is getting a second chance. Then we have Theta Knight who is a Ziegfeld dancer who is trying to find herself despite her very rough past and she's trying to escape that past. And I think she's half Native American but it's never really like outrightly stated but I'm, I'm like 80% sure she's half Native American. Then we have Henry Dubois IV, who is a piano player trying to get his songs published while being forced to write more catchy songs that have no meaning to them. He's also gay. Then we have Memphis Campbell, who is a numbers runner, who really just wants to make a better life for him and his younger brother while writing poems he is black and then so is his brother isaiah campbell who is memphis's younger brother who just wants to be taken seriously and not just seen as a little kid and the final character that i'll talk about is ling chan who is a scientifically minded girl trying to look past the misfortunes that have befallen her and so with her she's half asian half irish is disabled gay and asexual because she um is attracted to girls but is also not very not really into sex but yeah so with that main cast of characters too they're very diverse and it doesn't feel forced like how some authors just include not even main characters but side characters with different diverse aspects to them just for inclusion's sake. That's not the case here. All of these characters feel real in their diversity and it's just amazing. It's so good. <laughs> and like I said before, there are many other important characters, but this is the main bunch who carry the story. All of the characters, whether it be this main bunch or some side characters or even just briefly mentioned ones that don't stick around for the entirety of the series, all of them are very unique and flawed and therefore seem so believable and real and are th then therefore able to be uh, sympathized with and really just the diversity and this is astounding like honestly if you want to read a diverse book by author who does it right and not just for inclusion sake this is the series to go to And then also having to do with the characters, all of the relationships in this series are freaking amazing. <laughs> Whether it be the romantic relationships, the familial ones, the friendships just in general, or the other more complicated relationships, all of them are so completely constructed very well. It's just, she really did an amazing job with her characters too. It's just so, so good. And I will say that one of my all-time favorite ships now is in this series. And not, without getting spoilery, I really liked how it ended up. So I was really happy with that. Now let's get more into the plot. Now I would summarize the series as being a kind of mix of supernatural, stranger things, ghost Busters and The Stand, kind of. I um, mean, honestly, uh, each of the books kind of um, focuses more on them. So, like, The Diviners, I would say, is a novelization of Supernatural. Layer of Dreams is more so Stranger Things, though not with the main plot of Stranger Things, but kind of the political aspects that is in or hinted at with Stranger Things. Before the Devil Breaks You is totally like Ghostbusters and Supernatural, but I'd, I'd say Ghostbusters. And then uh, this one was kind of hard to find an example with. I kind of landed on the stand because it really is a travel novel, a traveling novel where the characters are trying to meet up 
in this location and also because of the kind of reason why they're traveling there it's kind of similar without getting into spoilers it's kind of similar to the stand by Stephen King so I guess now I'll go a little bit into the plots because for the most part each of these books has its own plot within the story it's not until the last two books that it's kind of more of like an overarching thing so i'll kind of go into it and i'll, I'll explain that a little bit more as i go along so the diviners obviously introduces us to the paranormal world but the main plot of this is a very spooky murder mystery and let me tell you when I read this the first time I couldn't read it at night because I was getting scared <laughs> it was really creepy a layer of dreams then introduces some new characters that we don't really see in the first one but then also expands more on the characters we did meet in the diviners and this one primarily focuses with a weird sleeping sickness thing it is scary as well but I, w I did not find myself as scared as with the diviners for some reason the diviners creeped me out a lot more now as for the before the devil breaks you this isn't as scary and it kind of doesn't have as much of its own singular plot this kind of is a culmination of the weird paranormal occurrences that happened in the first two books and is kind of explaining why those occurrences are happening or is at least starting to try to figure out why those occurrences are happening and then it is leading up to the overarching plot that then spans into the final book which is as i said the king of crows and this one is very much the climax of that overarching plot even though this is a lot slower than the previous books and like I said it is kind of just the characters trying to get to a new location and out of the books this is the only one that's not primarily set in New York it's more of a travel novel to throughout the United States I think out of these books my favorite is Before the Devil Breaks You which is the third one and I think it's mostly because I liked the romance, how the romance was going in this. Which, let me just say, the romance isn't a huge, huge part of it. It is necessary for the plot, but it's not like the only thing that's going on. It doesn't push the main plot to the side. At least I don't think. But yeah, I think this one is my favorite with maybe Layer of Dreams coming in second because especially again with the romance I really like the romance in this if you couldn't tell and then I think actually the div uh, the King of Crows is the my least favorite out of the series though it's still amazing don't get me wrong and I do want to mention with this series that I absolutely adored it and let me tell you it's been a long time since I found a series from start to finish that I absolutely loved and just couldn't get out of my head like I, I could honestly pick up this book these books again right now and reread them and totally be fine with it and not be bored because I just love this series so so much and it, it's just so good now before I get into final thoughts there are some other aspects I'd like to mention about the series the series series is very politically charged so much politics were happening in the actual 1920s in the US and so if it wasn't included in the books it wouldn't feel very historical and with that it's just jarring to see how those political issues that were going on in the 1920s that are reflected in these books how much they are relatable still now especially with all of the issues concerning feelings towards immigrants and just race racism and prejudice in general like it, it's so crazy how we're kind of repeating that now and it's it's really sad you would think that we would have learned from all of these issues since it's been a hundred years since this was originally going on so it's it's just really sad that it's that nothing really has changed for the better it's just if any well I, I don't know necessarily if it I would say it has gotten worse it just it, it hasn't changed which is really depressing and also in that vein 
this series is very moralizing but not in a heavy-handed way. I don't think the politics or the moralization are overdone at all or like kind of pushed in your face. I think it's very tastefully sprinkled throughout um, and is kind of like a wider th theme throughout the entire series. It's very focused on good versus evil, but especially displaying how it's not just good versus evil. It's not a clear-cut line between the two. It's more of a blurred gray line and what, what some people might think is good, others would see as evil. And it's kind of figuring out what is actually good or not. So that's basically everything non-spoilery I wanted to say about this series. I just want you guys to know that this is an absolutely this is most definitely a new favorite series for me, and I can safely say now that Libba Bray is an autobi favorite author for me. I've just enjoyed so much of her stuff, and I can't wait to see what she comes out with next. I would also really like to see more people talking and reading this series. It's just so great. So great of a series, and I don't think it's getting nearly enough buzz as it should be. Also, I would really love to see this be adapted. I think it is made to be adapted. Like a lot of, well, a lot of Libra Bray's descriptions are just so cinematic and beautiful. Like it, it needs to be made into some kind of movie or TV show or something. On the condition, though, <laughs> that I get to be Evie. That's the only way I'll be okay with it because I, I am Evie. That's a joke because I'm not an actor, but also uh, I'd love to be Evie, just, just so you guys, guys know. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, if you have read this series, please let me know your thoughts, especially if you've read The King of Crows. I'm dying to talk to someone about it. My mom hasn't read it yet, so I can't talk to her about it, and it's eating me up inside, but ugh, so good, so good. I would love to discuss this. If you have not read the series already, what are you doing? If you love any kind of paranormal fantasy, this this is where it's at. This series. It's amazing. Read it. <laughs> or if you like just any YA fantasy, this you need to read. If you like romance YA fantasy, read this because even though it's not the main plot, there's still enough of it that you would be satisfied. I'm not much for romance usually, but oh my god, the romance is in this. Just the friendships too. Just, it's an overall great book. You can't do wrong with it. So, read it. If there is one thing that I'll force you to read, I, I hope it's this. Because it's just so good. Okay. Ah, I'll stop talking now. Um, like I said, if you've read it, you want to talk about it, please comment down below. I need to talk about it because nobody other than my mom has read this series and she hasn't read the last book yet, so I need to talk to it about, or I need to talk about it to people, so please leave a comment down, down below, and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. I know this video is kind of random, but I needed to get this out as soon as possible because it was just so good I needed to talk about it, so yeah. I'm done blabbing, so I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.